Welcome to another episode of Business with Passion. Each show features guests who have transformed their long-term passion into a successful business. I'm your host, Jay Hamilton Roth. My marketing strategy business grew from my love of talking with passionate business owners. In this series, I share their passion with you. So if you're looking for inspiration to enhance your business passion, keep watching. Sometimes it seems like the world's falling apart at the seams. Like my mom told me, loving you is the truest thing that I could do. So I try to be true to the God as you see in me, love, to the God I see in you, to the God as you see in me, love, to the God I see in you, to the God as you see in me, love, to the God I see in you, yeah, you know, and though you may reside so far away, For me, Bioneers is the immune response of life on Earth. Um, it's our collective awareness emerging and the practices that say that if as human beings we have created these problems, we can also solve them. And the way through, however, is that we have to come together. We have to come together in a larger community in a way that appreciates the value of our differences and recognizes our common ground. Because together, and only together, can we actually create and co-create the future we need for ourselves, for our children, and for their children, as well as for the rest of life on Earth. Um, and really, you know, the time is now to do it. So a core premise is that as people understand how much is possible to do today, it will greatly leverage the pressure for change. We know that all the technical solutions in the world aren't going to make the change we need without a change of heart. So Bioneers is about recognizing, recognizing that the environment is really the mother of all issues and that we can no longer think about human activity and environment as being separate but that they are all part of one living system. And uh, the way through is to recognize the whole system. I believed that the world was not just enough. And I felt like if I could figure out a way to make a living and work on that problem, it would be a good thing. And within that, I, I, I just I gravitated to journalism and to the media because I felt like, you know, if a democracy is an effective democracy, a successful democracy is predicated on people being informed and participating. And if I could sort of help with the informed part, then that would be a good thing. So, you know, here I am. The organization's been around for about 33 years. We do investigative reporting. Uh, we've got seven reporters in Washington. We've got another couple out here in San Francisco. We look into stories that uh, a lot of other people in the press duck. and. Uh, try to report back to the rest of us about what's going on. We have a fantastic pair of editors. Uh, the co-editors are Monica Bauerlein and Clara Jeffrey. And really they've taken Mother Jones into a new age. They, they, they really have come up with a formula that took it from being essentially a print vehicle for so many years, a, a good one, uh, but one that I think was a little bit losing out to the times and, and really made it a quite vibrant website. And, um, 
uh, you know, we're, we're, we're kicking. Kenny Ausubel, 17 or 18 years ago now, came to my office and, you know, brought with him a number of ideas for kind of investigative reports and as well as the, the word that he had put together this, this program, uh, this annual event called the Bioneers. And I, I, Mother Jones, I think, has been a sponsor probably from like the fourth or fifth year. I mean, quite early on. I mean, we've been doing it at least, at least 15 years. And, um, man, this, this place is... This is so ahead of the curve. I mean, there are so many people that that I have found that you know that I heard first at Bioneers, you know, 10, 12, 15 years ago, you know, whose whose science, whose work, whose activism has really kind of bloomed in the sense then. So I, you know, Kenny is like this this kind of you know venture capital guy of of uh, you know of, of of ideas, and I he is he is fantastic. He and the inner are both fantastic. Some of our teachers have been sent in, the, in years past, and our director wanted a group to go, and so I volunteered. Um, our school just recently went solar. Uh, we have a water retrieval system. we trying to be completely green. Um, did a green fair two years ago where every class did a green project. And it's part of the world and got to bring it to the kids. Destiny is a violence prevention and arts education organization in Oakland, California. We've been around for 21 years. We're now legal. Bioneers is barely legal. We're legal. Um, and we do dance, theater, martial arts, self-defense, conflict resolution, and violence prevention for young people at our center and also in 18 Oakland public schools and after-school programs. This year, actually, um, some of the work that um, the kids are going to perform on stage on Sunday is inspired by Annie Leonard's piece called Story of Stuff. And it just so happens that Annie Leonard is speaking directly after we perform, which is, to me, the divine coincidence. Um, and so we were really excited to be able to show that piece and to show how inspired we are by the work of the visionaries that present here at the conference. I fell in love with not only teaching young people dance, but helping them to find their authentic voices through the art. And in the context of a violence prevention center that is, is really empowering them physically, mentally, and spiritually. I mean, there, there really can be a better combination for me as an artist, because I'm not only an artist, I'm an activist, I'm um, a spiritual seeker. And so the confluence of all of those pieces of my being really did come together post kiss, kicking and screaming um, in this place that we now call destiny and it really it's a powerful combination of really strong values really beautiful community that struggles with each other and then falls in love with each other again and again um, it's just young people and families and you know, we start it all the way at three and, and, you know, we take kids all the way through their high school year, years, and I get to see young people become who they are. I mean, there's nothing better than that. Um, Destiny is an incredible community, very vibrant, and continues to amaze me as it grows. You know, it's sort of a testament to if you have strong values, if you are willing to be flexible and change with the generations as they come up, if you're willing to add youth voice into your work, something powerful happens, and that's what happens at Destiny. Binary's people are so alive. They're excited about all of the issues. They're, they're not coming through the lens of oppression so much as energy for what we can do next. And that's what this generation of young people and this particular group of young people are about. And so it was a match, I think it was a match made in heaven. Um, and so we've been coming to the stage, we do original work every year um, about different issues and a lot of the work that gets created is inspired by the speakers and, that are here at the conference and the different issues that come up in conversation or brainstorms post-conference we create a lot of performance work that 
um, come from these particular issues. So it's really exciting then to come back to the conference the year after, after we've created original work around these issues and present it here at the conference. The other important driver of change, I think, is going to be the health care crisis. Um, you know, we've been talking a lot about health care. We've heard this number. We're spending over $2 trillion a year to treat Americans. Well, look, at break that down. The CDC says three quarters of that amount is going to treat preventable, these are its words, preventable chronic diseases. Now, not all of those are linked to diet. You've got smoking in there and alcoholism, but most of them are. More than $500 billion a year goes to treat preventable chronic diseases linked to diet. The health care crisis is a euphemism for the catastrophe of the American diet. And I think it's just to be a part of a network of individuals from all over the world who are working towards a common purpose of building the sustainable future. And um, you want to know that you're not doing it alone. And it's uh, comforting to be part of a, a large network of people. So that's why we're here. Everybody's got to get involved that it can't just be the pioneers, it's got to be every single individual doing their small part. And if um, everybody does their small part, we're going to be able to uh, move forward. Um, um, so uh, that's what I would like to say to everybody out there is to, you know, get involved in some way. Mm. What we're doing is, is, is about uh, our people, our land, um, my father's lands and islands of Ava'u and Tonga, um, beautiful little islands, just the jewel of the Pacific, the middle of the ocean, coconut trees, and, and about the strength of our people, but at the same time, the vulnerabilities that we have. We are very strong culturally, but we're very vulnerable to a lot of other influences of the world. So for, for me, it's, it's not just the old technologies, such as carving that we quickly will talk to, but new technologies. So how do we save and revitalize our, our language? And my particular work is the creation of a Māori computer keyboard, which we can template for other languages. Well, um, carving is our, our way of telling our stories, our histories, our myths and legends in, in our way. <clears throat> so it's, it's, for us it's the ancient, ancient technology of communication. We recently um, had the privilege of, of completing a very large po. We call it a po, but it's, it's a totem, if you like. And it's 80 feet high. It's the tallest Māori Pacific totem po, uh, as far as we know, in, the contemporary, in contemporary history. And, and we had 30 carvers from around the world, including from as far north as the Kalingik in Alaska, to Cree, uh, to North America, and right through to Arapa Nui, Easter Island, Tahiti, Hawaii. And, and on those, which Kuki was the um, creative director, we were carved the stories, indigenous stories of creation and migration, and Kupe, the great explorer of the Pacific. And, and everyone can feel a sense of their own identity, I guess. You know, we, we just, we, it was a gift to the world. It was, uh, took three years and it's available for anybody to see. It stands in Auckland, New Zealand. For me, I was born into it, um, 32 generations, um, on both sides of my family actually. My, my mother's uh, father was a, was a famous carver and an opera singer, Ine Tiwiat, and then my dad's line, uh, canoe builders. So I, I couldn't really escape it, if you like. <laughs> yeah. But it's certainly been a blessing, and you know, I've um, done it all in my life. My earliest memories have been uh, in the carving shed and hearing the, the sounds of the of the tapping of the of the chisels and the axes. So, um, it's it's something that I, I love and, and I love to share. This is whalebone. 
well, whales are born on a reef. They're only a few meters away from, from where uh, my father was born in Vava'u and in Ewa. But when they leave Tonga and they travel to the Antarctic, it's like mm. running the gauntlet for them. Once they leave protected waters, they're fair game for anybody, anybody's game. And I feel so uh, passionate about them being protected as I am a Tonga national. You know, I have protected, I have rights when I leave the country and our whales too. I mean, they're, they're way more ancient than we are. And they should have rights, you know, as, as nationals as well. So the, part, of, part of some of our projects are thinking about how we can uh, protect not just our ecosystems, but also our, you know, our, our cousins and brothers and sisters of the ocean. Silence. When you think of silence, you think of nothing. And so we pretty much want to bring nothing to the violence, you know what I mean? We want to turn violence into nothing. So that's pretty much what we do, and that's just our rhyming way of putting it, you know, we are artists. <laughs> and also, the only way you can silence the violence is first is yourself. It always starts with you. It starts with, start with you, then when you do that, you can promote that to others. This is my second time at Bioneers. It's pretty exciting. I think it's a really good place to just gain more perspective on everything. I don't know. Like, I think it's a place that's really informative and it's really useful to like gain knowledge about like I don't know, like story about story of stuff. Like, really cool to meet Annie because um, I've seen that movie like many, many times and we like incorporated it into our show. So I thought that was interesting. Um, it's it's our, our first time first time being here. here. And we're new to company, and everything is really exciting. I thought it was really cool to be here, like, it's fun. <laughs> and um, you learn a lot about all the environmental issues, and the people who spoke are really great. And um, it was really good to meet you. And I had a really good time dancing. I'm <laughs> always excited. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know, I think it's just really cool because there's like a lot of people here from different backgrounds. I mean, like there's some people who are kind of just crazy, but you know, they're a little out there, <laughs> yeah. more so than I am. So I don't know, it's like interesting to just like see what they have to say. I was tr searching for who I am and searching for meaning, depth, and authenticity. And I was a studio artist, but felt something was missing. Opportunity came, took me to inner city North Philadelphia, an abandoned lot. I was invited to create an art park there. I didn't know how frightened, um, but a voice said, you have to rise to the occasion to do it. I met my guide who lived in an abandoned lot next to it. He brought children with recycled materials, gained the trust of adults. It began from an art park and became a village that included um, education year-round, theater, uh, publication, um, farmer's market, and transformed a 200 abandoned lot into parks gardens. But then I'm on the road to in, to China and Rwanda. Um, I call it the healing project because I was introduced to a mass grave and uh, a survivor's village. And both happened because one horrendous event of genocide. And yet I felt an artist could do something. And so I work with the children and whoever wants to participate, we just paint. That kind of begin to inspire people, begin to make them feel uh, hopeful, and then they begin to um, communicate with each other be before they were isolated. And uh, then as it w I, I designed this um, mass grave and um, have people help to build it. And so in honoring their dead and bring beauty to their dead, the living begin to regain their human heart.
I brought in volunteers, then um, see making art in traumatized places like making fire in the dark night of winter. It rekindles hope. It gives people direction. It calls out for other people to join in. Artists wanting to find meaningful work, not just work in the studio, but and to sell your work, but want to contribute to the change of the society. So through the whole experience, I realized that art is such a powerful vehicle for social change. It's readily available. It is very inclusive process because we all have that artist in us. And when you are invited to create art, that's how the pilot light is lit. That's how I light other people's pilot light. I'm a, I'm a light lighter, small flame like everybody else, but it's shining. Peace, compassionate, living, social sculpture. That's what I do. <laughs> what we're fundamentally coming around, coming together around, is what we call a declaration of interdependence. That just as you know, everything in the web of life is hitched to each other, so are we all to that web and, and to one another. Mm -hmm. And we really have to recognize that interdependence and um, find just and fair ways to live together in a way that's going to last for the long haul. So I think that's what really it's about. Thanks for watching this episode of Business with Passion. If you'd like more information about Bioneers, other episodes, or perhaps to be a guest on a future show, go online to tv.manygoodideas.com.